Right. The key to getting this question 3 correct. Was this equation given that we have to get into standard form? If you weren't able to notice that and you didn't know that two lines dot, that are perpendicular, Rory, what do we know about their gradients? Swapped around with a negative. If you don't know that, then you won't get the sum right. Okay. So I'm going to start immediately by getting this into standard form, and that gives me negative a half x plus 9. Right. This equation is the equation of BTD. And now the gradient that you want is of the line ATC. Now looking at it like that, can you see that those are the two lines that are perpendicular? Which means if the gradient of BTD is equal to negative a half, the two lines are perpendicular and therefore the gradient of AC is going to be equal and you don't even have to show the calculation. It's only when they're asking you to prove that the lines are perpendicular, that you have to do the gradient times gradient equal to negative 1. All you can do is, you can say the gradient of AC is therefore, swap it around so it becomes 2, give it another negative, which makes it positive, and then you have the gradient. That's all you have to do. Got it? Right. Next up, we want to determine the equation of AC in the form y equal to mx plus c. So now I've got the gradient. This gradient, that's 2, is this m. And it's of that line. So I can substitute into this equation y equal to 2x plus c. Now remember, when we want to find an equation, we want it to have a y. It must be y. And we want it to have the x. It must be x. But we want the value of m and we want the value of c. So what I, I'm trying to do, if you look at it like that, you will see you've got three variables. You've got y, x, and c. So I cannot find c like that. So I'm going to use the coordinate given that's on this line and substitute it into the place of x and y. So I put in here negative 5 equal to 2 times negative 2 plus c, and that gives me an answer of c equal to, what is it, negative 1. And then I have the equation y equal to 2x minus 1. Do you all understand that? Okay. Now they're telling you if the equation of AC is 2x minus 1. Now I see that's exactly what I got. So I know got all the marks so far right. Calculate the coordinates of T. Now if you look at T, you've got two unknowns. And I'm saying both options because all of the questions won't always be the same. When I've got two variables to calculate, there are two ways. The first one is if it's a midpoint and you have the other two gradients, or if you have the midpoint and it's one, ah, oh, the coordinates. If you have the midpoint and you want that coordinate, or if you have the two coordinates and you want the midpoint. But we couldn't do it here for two reasons. The first one is it hasn't been said that this is a kite. They haven't told you either that this line and this line is the same length, which makes T the midpoint. So already there you couldn't use it. The second reason why you couldn't do it, even if you knew it was a midpoint, is because you don't have the coordinate of C. So that makes it impossible. But the two equations you have is BTD, that's going to be y equal to negative a half x plus 9. And you've got ATD. 
which is y equal to 2x minus c. Now just looking at those two lines, what's the same in their names? It's the t, which means it's a point of intersection. So what I can do is I can... Oh, tc, sorry. What I um, can do is I can let the two equations be equal to each other. Because when they are equal to uh, each other, they will tell me where they cut each other. Because those two straight lines, looking at it, can you see, they can only cut once. In all of the infinity number of values that we have for x and for y, there's only one specific point where those two lines intersect. And that's at the point T. So therefore, I can say negative a half x plus 9 equal to 2x minus 1. I can do that because both of them are equal to y. So if Rory is naughty and CC is naughty, it means they are the same. Do you agree? Okay. You can use the, these values or these terms as they are. I don't like fractions, okay? So I get rid of the denominator, but it's not necessary. But I would start by multiplying every term with 2. And it makes this one minus x plus 18 equal to 4x minus 2. And that gives me 4x equal to 20, and therefore x is equal to 5. I've only got the x value now. I also need to find the y value. So I substitute it in one of the equations there. Any one of them, they will both give you the same answer, but I would rather choose the one without the fractions. So it's 2 times 4 is 8. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. Minus 1 gives me an answer of 9. And therefore y is equal to 9. Do you understand that? Did you get that? Did I make a mistake now? Yes. Where? Oh, sorry, this is oh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This one gives me, sorry, this is 20 equal to 5x. And then x is equal to 4, ASCIIs. And then when x is equal to 4, it's 2 times 8 minus 1, and therefore y is equal to 7. Sorry. And then it's 4 and 7, which is the coordinate of t. You understand it? Okay. Next up, now they say, if A, B, C, D is a kite. Now it's a kite. Now you can use the properties of a kite. Now the properties of a kite is that this side is equal to this side. This side is equal to this side. And this one is equal to this one. We also know that this angle is equal to this angle, but you guys saw that with analytical geometry, we don't really have a lot to do with the angles. Something that they already gave us, but if they hadn't given us, we should know it, is that this is also perpendicular. Those are the main properties that we can have with um, a cut. Now they want you to find the coordinates of C. So if you were to do it algebraically, you would use the midpoint. So it says that A's X value plus C's X value, which is unknown, divided by 2 will give you an answer of 4. Does that make sense? So I multiply the 2, the X goes over, oh, the negative 2 goes over, and therefore X is equal to 10. With the y, it's going to be negative 5 plus y over 2 equal to 7. The 2 goes over, it becomes 14. The minus 5 goes over, and therefore I, y is equal to 19. So the coordinates of c will be 10 and 19. Now, once again, we can have a shortcut. This distance and this distance is exactly the same. And it's on a, it's collinear points. Right? So what happened to negative 2 to become 4? 
plus negative 2, this side of 0, to 4, that side of 0. It's plus 6. And then you just do that again for the x. 4 plus 6 is going to be 10. Negative 5 to 7. Negative 5 on this side of 0. 7 on that side. Plus 12. And 7 plus 12. 19. So you can shortcut it. Okay. Happy? Good. Next up, they want the length of BT. Now the problem to find the length of BT is that you have T's coordinate, but you don't have B's coordinate. You have the length of AB. This BT and AB are part of a rectangular triangle. It's got a 90 degree angle there. And that makes it a Pythagorean triangle. But to do Pythagoras, you need two known sides and a 90 degree angle. I've got a known side and a 90 degree angle. But I can find the length of AT. Do you agree? Because I've got A, I've got T, I've got the formula. AT is going to be equal to the square root of, and I'm going to say minus 2 minus 4 square plus minus 5 minus 7 square. And that gives me an answer of 6 root 5. Uh, 6 root 5. So this is now the length of this side, 6 root 5. And now I can do Pythagoras because I've got two nodes and a 90 degree angle. So I say that um, 6 root 5 squared plus BT squared will be equal to 15 squared and the reason I'm doing that is for Pythagoras. Okay? Then if you take it over and square root it, it gives you 6 root 3, 5 root 3, what was it? 3 root 5. 3 root 5 and that's the length of BT. Done. Now 3.4.3, we spoke about this yesterday, no? This is a sum that can confuse us because now they are referring to a circle. And circles we had with Euclidean. We haven't had circles at anal analytical geometry. But just go and draw in the circle. They are referring to a circle that goes through the point B, T, and C. So what that means is that those points are on the circumference of the circle. And that means that this angle T is on the circumference. And it's most 90 degrees. Which makes T an angle in a semicircle. And if it's an angle in a semicircle, means that line cuts the circle in half. And the line that cuts the circle in half is called the diameter. They told you that at the beginning they said AB is equal to BC. So I know this diameter is 15 units. So what is the length of the radius? 7,5 units. No calculation, nothing. You're just going to say 7,5 angles in a semicircle. Or angle in a semicircle. You will not be penalized if you did not say units. But if it was an area and it was units squared, you will be penalized. Okay. Let me explain it to you. Two. Where there'd be a value or a distance, it's two. Okay. But two square meters, for example is way different than two. Two square meters is two blocks that's a meter by a meter big. Okay, because it's a surface, it's an area. So that's why when it's an area that you have to give, you have to give the unit squared. If it's not an area, it's a distance, you won't be penalized. 
If you want to play it safe, you can always put it there. Any questions on this one? Question three. Who would have gotten 15 out of 15? Good, 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 good. Uh, who got just one sum wrong? Two sums. Three. Four. More than four. Are you all okay? Great. Nine point five. Where are you? No. Use your calculator. Fifteen squared minus six root five squared square root. That's why you plus. Is that what you did? Okay, so listen to me. You don't really, it's not necessary to show this Pythagoras. You have to give the reason Pythagoras. But I would always rather just write that introduction line. Okay, with the substitution. Writing, okay, this is my right angled side, that's a right angled side, and that's my um, hypotenuse. Just to not make the mistake of adding where I should have subtracted. Okay. Because if you had done that, then you would lose all the marks because you're adding. So you're using a fundamental rule of Pythagoras incorrectly. So rather play it safe. It's four marks. Okay, next one. I said to you yesterday that the thing about this sum is that there are two triangles. The one triangle is ABC and the other triangle is EBC. And although ABC is like the main triangle that was drawn here, the triangle EBC has got way more information because it's a triangle that has a horizontal base. Okay. Starting with AB, the gradient of AB. No problems there. I've got all of the information I need. I'm going to say 12 minus minus 3 over... 4 minus minus 5. And that gives me 5 over 3 in the simplest form. I hope there was no trouble with that. Okay. Determine the coordinates of E. Now there are two ways to determine this. And I want you to listen to both, both options. Because remember, all of the sums are not the same. So you cannot decide... I, I prefer this one. I would just rather always use it because it won't always work. The first thing you had to notice there is that you've got the gradient of AB. You've got two coordinates, which means you can find the equation of AB. And when I look at E, only the X is unknown. I have a coordinate of Y, which is zero. I can substitute into the equation of the straight line and then find the value of x, which is fine. But the second way, and this is actually what they wanted you to do, is they wanted you to notice that A, E, and B are collinear points. That means that the gradient of AE is equal to the gradient of EB is equal to the gradient of AB. And when I consider those, I've got the gradient of AB. So all you had to do was use the gradient formula where you have the answer of the gradient of AB. It is 5 over 3. So when I substitute into the gradient formula, it would be 0, and you can choose AE or EB, because in both of them you've got the point E. doesn't make a difference. I would say 0 minus 12 over X minus 4. And then it's just a simplification. Now, if I can help you with the simplification, you'll remember I said if your unknown is in the denominator, it can swap with the answer without changing any signs. So I've got x minus 4 equal to negative 12 
divide by 5 over 3. When I divide with 5 over 3, it becomes times 3 over 5. And that gives me x minus 4 equal to 36 over 5. And I take the 4 over, it subtracts there, and that gives me x equal to, do you have it there? Where's my calculator? I lost my calculator now. 16 over 5. Negative 16 over 5. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you use the straight line equation and substitute in there, you would also get negative 16 over 5. Now that, yeah. Of the straight line. Uh, just bring it to me when we're done. Maybe you just made a, a, a mistake with the sign. It should not give you two different answers. Okay. Right. Determine the size of alpha. Round off to the nearest whole number. Now, to find the size of alpha, this is an inclination angle. Can you all see that? Inclination angle. So, you remember with inclination angle, it says that the tan of alpha will be equal to the gradient of a b no, that was the next one so i want alpha i have the gradient of a b i calculated it at the first one so i'm going to say shift 10 of 5 over 3 and it gives me rounded off to a whole number 59 degrees Are you happy with that? Okay, now I want to put the, the whole diagram here on the board because I want to talk about this. Next question. They are asking this question very far from where you have to start. They are asking you, basically, for an equation going through A that's parallel to BC. Okay, so there's this line, it's parallel to BC. So the fact that it's parallel to BC should already tell you that you're going to have to steal this gradient from BC. Because otherwise, why are they telling you this? There are three ways to find the gradient. You can calculate it when you've got two coordinates. Can I calculate here? No, because I've only got one coordinate. Can I calculate it with BC? No, because I've only got one gradient. Okay, so I can't use the gradient formula. The second way is inclination angle. Now that's going to be the way that we get it, so I just want to hang on for a second there. Just keep it in mind. The third way is stealing it, which is an option here. Now, we don't have an inclination angle here, but we do have an inclination angle there by C. Right? And they've now told you that this angle is 60, uh, 76, and I've calculated this angle to be 59. So, if I can find in some way the size of this angle here, I can find the gradient of BC. If I have the gradient of BC, I can steal it for the new line. And then I've got a coordinate to put into X and Y, and then I can calculate C. Does that plan make sense? Sure, sure. Right. So I've got it on the board here. I'm going to write it down in a minute. Let me see if I can twist this up. So... Um, it will be upside down now. So the Dora can see this. I 
I want you all to to keep a look out on your on your sketch. Okay. So when we look at our diagram and I look at the angle that is 60 of 76 this one I'll be upside down now. I'll just look right like that. Zara. <laughs> okay. You see the angle that is 76 right there. And the angle that's 59 right there. The angle I want is this one C here. Do those three angles have something in common? Or this is the exterior angle of these two opposite interior angles. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, I'm calling it C1, because you know you're going to have an answer sheet ne? With, with geometry. So the diagram will be there and then you do the sums after you. So on your diagram sheet you might have named it C1, that one on the outside. So I'm saying C1 is going to be those two angles added because it's the exterior angle of the triangle. And that gives you C1 equal to 155 degrees. Hmm? What did I say? 155 degrees. Then using the inclination angle, I know that the tan of C1 will be the gradient of BC. Now remember what I am trying to get. I'm trying to get the gradient of BC so that I can steal it for this new line. So I'm saying the tan of 135 degrees will be equal to negative 1. And that therefore is the gradient of BC. Now that I have the, the gradient of BC, I can steal it because BC is parallel to the line I want. And therefore the gradient of BC that's equal to negative 1 will be equal to the gradient of this line. Alright, everyone still with me? So now I'm stealing that gradient and putting it into this line that I want, gradient in the formula. But I've got three unknowns. I need to find C, so I have to put a value into X and Y. But they told me that this line is going to go through A. Okay, so I take A's coordinate and substitute it into the place of X and Y. And therefore, I can calculate C to be negative 8. And I can give the equation of this specific line as Y equal to negative X minus 8. Does it make sense? It's a, you see the problem here? They are asking this thing, but we had to do a lot of other things to get to this thing. Any question? Yes. You forgot the big angle. Yeah. I, but now you remember. Because this is practice and it's okay to make mistakes in homework. It's mis okay to make the mistakes when we practice it so that we can not make the mistakes when we write the exams. While you're finished writing this, I, I had quite a... Um, I was a little bit quiet from Dr. Carlson the previous year. Because there were some kids that said that they don't understand the perpendicular lines, gradients. Okay, so I, I need you to understand that there is nothing to understand. Okay. You have to learn that if you've got the gradient of a line and that line is perpendicular to another line 
Then you take this gradient, you swap it around, and you give it a negative, then you've got the gradient of the perpendicular line. I cannot learn for you. I can teach you. But if you see that you are constantly struggling with this, you are using the wrong things, you understand what I'm saying, but you're not getting the things right, I suggest you go to the summaries. I've given you two summaries. There's the science clinic summary in there, and then there's the summary that I made. You've got both of them. That means you're going to have to stop or take this weekend and sit and learn it. Make a summary for yourself. Make posters that you paste into your room, okay, on the walls. You put there, Cranian formula, what is it? You write down the gradient formula and then below it you write down where do I use the gradient? Parallel lines equal gradient. Perpendicular lines reciprocal with a negative. Then you go to midpoint. Write down the midpoint formula so that you can see if you can learn it. Where do I use the midpoint formula? Two unknowns. Distance formula, write down the formula. Calculating the length of a star. That's the least complicated one. You can only calculate the length of a side. Or use the length of a side to find one coordinate. But you're going to have to put in the effort to learn. Otherwise, we are wasting our time. Is it true what I'm saying? Well, my line. Is it true? Go. Okay. Alright, so... We are now going to get to the next two questions, which is question three of November 2016 and question four of November 2016. Um, there is one thing I want to talk to you about. The Afrikaans class said that you guys didn't do the midpoint theorem last year. The midpoint theorem looks something like this triangle that you have here. Okay, the conclusion that we have here is that if this side, these two sides are equal to each other, and these sides are parallel, it means that these two will also be equal to each other, and then just something else, this line will be half the length of that line. So it's, it, it sounds complicated, Okay. But I think it just proves that what we think it looks like here is true. Because do you agree with me? You think that AN is the same length as NC. Do you think so? Okay, because it is. But now they haven't given it to us. So if they don't give it to us, you're going to have to prove it. Now... In this question in 2016, you would have done the midpoint theorem in grade 10. So if you look at question 3.4, they say calculate with reasons the coordinates of N. That reasons that they are referring to is they want you to say that N is the midpoint of that line and your reason would just be midpoint theorem. Okay. So I don't know. I, I heard they said that it was in a question paper last year end of the year but you guys didn't do it or something like that you can still use it what I'm saying is not hard as I say it just confirms what you think but if you have to give the reason you're just going to say midpoint theorem okay so if the midpoint theorem is there this one and this one equal it mean and these two parallel it will mean that these two are also equal to each other and the length of MN will be half the size of or the length of BC. If they didn't tell you those lines are parallel, and they only told you that they, these two are equal and these two are equal, then you can also s use the midpoint theorem to say that these two lines will be parallel. Okay, so two of the things must be there. Then you can say the other two things are true because it's the midpoint theorem. So if they say this one is half the length of that one and these two sides are equal, 
then you can say, okay, because of that, these two will also be equal and they will be parallel midpoint theorem. So just what you think you see is true and the reason is midpoint theorem. Now, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to go through the questions like I did for, we did for yesterday's work. Now I'm going to have you do it a little bit more on your own. There's only one thing I want to say here. Do you notice looking at this diagram that this one and this one are equal to each other? What that, does that mean about M? It's the middle of AB. It's the midpoint of AB. And then do you also notice that BC is parallel to MN? And what does that mean for us? There, the gradients are equal to each other. Okay. All right. Now you can start with it. You're going to do question three and question four on the next page. Oh, before you go, last, or before you start, the last thing. In question 3.5, they are referring to a quadrilateral A, B, C, D. So there's no D here. Remember what they say in that order. A, B, C. So D is going to be somewhere here. Here at the bottom. You can use, remember, with a parallelogram, we know the diagonals bisect. So you can use the one diagonal's midpoint to get and use that midpoint to get the other one because it's the midpoint of the other diagonal as well. Or, you remember the shortcut? Because they are telling you this is a parallelogram. How did 2 change to become negative 4? The same way 6 will change to become the x value of d. How did 15 change to become 3? The same way minus 2 to get to that one. You can also use the midpoint because you're going to find n's coordinates and it is the midpoint of that um, diagonal. You can also use that shortcut. How did x change to get to the midpoint? It will change in the same way to get to that one because the, the, the distances are the same. All right, that's all I want to say.